Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a travel reading pillow in absolutely any size. The link in the description box has the pattern pieces that will uh, give a tutorial with it as well to show you how to make it in the different sizes. Today I'm making it a standard size and these are great for absolutely any age. You can make the pockets in the front shorter or longer and the pattern pieces include that so that you can stuff clothes in there for an overnight travel bag too. The first thing that we're going to make are the handles. If you don't wanna make handles, you can use ribbon instead. Just cut a 10 inch piece of ribbon and attach it like I'm going to attach this. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your fabric. It is 10 inches by four inches wide. Fold it in half with the wrong sides together and iron it so that you see that crease right down the middle. Then you're gonna get your bottom edges and fold them up to that crease and press those flat with your iron as well. Then you're going to get your top edges and bring it to the crease and then fold that flat with your iron. Now you're going to bring both of those folded edges together and press that with your iron. This is what your strap looks like once you're done ironing. And the only thing left to do for now is to top stitch right close to the edge at the top to close these layers. This is what it looks like. See how I stitched right close to the edge there. You can do another stitch on the other edge if you want it to match. And your raw edges, don't worry about those. Those will be hidden inside of your pillowcase. So the next thing you wanna do is get your front pocket piece. If you're going to add fusible fleece interfacing, go ahead and do that to the very bottom edges up to the middle of your pocket piece. And you're gonna follow your package directions. Normally though, all you have to do is lay the rough side against the front piece of fabric, fold over your pocket piece, and then you're going to press up and down with your iron. Not smoothing it left to right, but just press up and down for about five to 10 seconds. And that glue on your fleece will adhere to your fabric. If you're not using fusible fleece, go ahead and get your pocket fabric piece, fold it in half, and press it with your iron. Now you're going to top stitch right up close to the edge using about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Here's what it looks like top stitched. Now that you have the top stitch done, go ahead and get your main front piece of fabric, lay the folded pocket piece on the bottom of your fabric with a fold on the top and pin or clip it in place on the sides. Then you're going to sew both sides a small basting stitch about 1 8 of an inch just to hold it in place. Here's what it looks like once you've got that basting stitch right close to the edge there. It doesn't have to go all the way up, it's just to hold it in place. And the next thing you're gonna do is decide if you wanna add pockets. Well, not add pockets, but make pockets out of your front pocket. I'm only gonna add one right down the center. So I'm going to fold this main piece of fabric in half and crease just the bottom so that I can get a nice crease. That's gonna be my sewing guideline to make this into two pockets. Then I'm gonna bring it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna make a small stitch just right there where the crease is. This will give you a two pocket. You can place your lines anywhere you want to make as many pockets as you wanna make. And the next thing we're gonna do is add your handles. Go ahead and fold it in half again and make a firm crease at the very top of your main piece of fabric. Unfold it and then find that middle crease that you just made. I'm folding it in half just so you're, you're able to see it easier. You don't have to do that. You found your main middle crease there at the top. Now fold your handle pieces so that the handle is facing down and you're gonna place them approximately one and a half inches from the middle crease there. Go ahead and pin or clip those handles in place. And just like you did on your pocket, you're gonna make two small basting stitches, one eighth of an inch right across the top there to hold those in place. 
Here are my basting stitches. You can see when you flip it up, it looks like the handle should, but for now we're gonna keep it flipped down while we finish the sewing process. Now you're going to get your two back pieces of fabric for your pillowcase. Lay them how they should be laid correctly, and we're gonna be working with the two pieces of fabric that meet together in the middle. We're gonna go ahead and get those two edges fold it up approximately one fourth of an inch and press it flat with your iron. You can see here, I'm getting ready to roll it up approximately one fourth of an inch. It does not have to be perfect. And then you're going to crease that with your iron all the way down the side just this one side. Then you're going to fold it up again another one fourth of an inch and press it flat with your iron. Now you're going to top stitch close to that edge there all the way down. And this is what it looks like after you've done it to both of your back pieces. They're the pieces that should be kissing basically so that when we sew it onto your pillowcase front piece, they'll overlap right there and not show any seams or edges on the outside of the pillowcase. Now get your main front part of your pillowcase and lay it facing upwards and your creased and sewn edges should be facing up and match that up with your pillowcase on the left side. Then you're going to get the other one and match it up with the right side so that these two back pieces overlap. And just don't forget that your sewn and creased ends should be facing upwards. After you've done that, go ahead and pin or clip your fabric in place all the way around this pillowcase. And then you're going to sew all the way around it, all the way around, just like here. Now through the envelope opening in the back, go ahead and flip your fabric right side out. Smooth in any seams with your fingers. I like to also use a chopstick. I go ahead and put it right inside the fabric hole in the back and press that chopstick along the seams and the edges and, the, and then poke out those corners really well. It really helps to get it all straight and smooth. Once you're done straightening it and getting all those seams how they should look, flip it over to the front side, make sure all your ends and edges are nice and crisp, and then press it with your iron. After you press it with your iron, you're all finished making this pillowcase, and the only thing you have left to do now is to stuff your pillow through the back envelope opening. I like to lint roll, especially when I'm using black, because it picks up every single piece of fiber possible. Um, and this is a super cute gift to give to any good reader. Stuff some books in there, put a journal in it, um, and you can make it any size to fit your needs.